Mental health is the foundation for well-being and effective functioning for an individual and for a community. One of the most disabling medical disorders is depression, a mental health condition which affects a person's thinking, energy, feelings and behaviour, impacting on the individual's family, work and life. Any of us, irrespective of age, gender or background, can be affected at any point in our lives. Stigma and discrimination associated with having a mental illness can have a devastating impact not only on the quality of life of the person with a mental health issue, but also their recovery prospects, which often could be so devastating that they prevent people from seeking help for fear of being labelled. But let's hear people's thoughts about depression. I know that at the moment an awful lot of people seem to be suffering from depression and um, low mood, people not feeling in good form and I also think it's quite a hidden disease of the 21st century at the moment. My view about depression, people when they have projects or in the case of a woman with children don't have time for depression. I think that a lot of it is where people have enough on their mind to worry about or have too much time on their hands and I think that that leads to thinking too much and worrying about too many other problems that creates a lot of depression. I come from, as they say, a long line of depressives. You know, my, my mother was depressed, her mother was depressed, and there was a mental illness on my father's side of the family. I didn't want to live anymore, so I had a, a suicide attempt. I'm bipolar. I became unwell, shall we say, about 10 years ago. No memory of what I did, where I was. What do I know about it? I live in it. 36 years worth with her. People just have to understand that people have problems and we have to help them with it, not just label them. I think society has to take responsibility for people with depression and I think society and, and the way we live causes an awful lot of depression but it could be you, it could be me. Uh, I know that it affects a majority of people and that people have a problem talking about it because of social stigma and stuff like that and that there is a, like, a majority of people, like well a high percentage of people actually suffer from depression but it, um, it is a definitely a taboo subject in Ireland. Half of us would not want to tell anyone that we had a mental health problem, anyone, including those closest to us in our lives. So that's very, very significant. That um, illustrates that there is huge stigma. Um, also, and I guess it you know, is, is very much related to that, 48% um, of us would not want or feel comfortable to tell a work colleague or um, a fellow student, a classmate, that we're having or have had a mental health problem at some point in our lives. We asked Professor Jim Lucy, consultant psychiatrist and medical director of St. Patrick's University Hospital, to give us more information about this illness. Depression is a mental health disorder. It's distinct from normal sadness or regret because in this, the sadness and the gloom, the loss of pleasure and joy, overwhelms the person. One of the things about mental health disorders is that they're not defined according to their causes. They're described according to the pattern that you see, the pattern that we experience. And this is an experience that's very common. One in four of us in our lives will experience a mental health disorder. And one in five of us, it will be depression. For biological factors, and uh, they need to be put in the context of social factors and in the context of psychological factors. These are really terms that are trying to wrestle with the complexity of a problem. If you mean by bi biological problems are chemicals and disordered features of our physical makeup contributing to depression, yes, there are many of those. Um, depression can arise in the context of medical illness and uh, of course our chemistry is up in upheaval when we've got serious mental illness but we're also in, when, it's when we've got serious physical illness and so there's interaction there. I suffered what's known as serious pain in, in my right face. I was diagnosed as having a um, trigeminal nerve problem. My consultant advised me to see a, a psychiatrist and he explained because of the severity of the pain that would bring a, a, a level of stress leading to depression on this. I had the referral about a week afterward uh, to a consultant in Dublin. Thankfully, it was never uh, in a hospital situation. It was a day patient, as it were. The first day I arrived and saw a psychiatrist on the door, uh, let me say I, I did think twice about walking away. I have to say that. 
Thank God I didn't, and I was there for four referrals, and thankfully that's now four years or five years ago maybe. I haven't had any uh, recurrence of the pain. Uh, I don't, I'm not on medication. It can arise when there's no physical illness, but there may be many physical symptoms for which there's no physical or otherwise medical explanation. Or it can arise without either of those things in the context of a stress or a loss or a grief um, or a challenge. Or occasionally it can arise when things are going swimmingly. So melancholy is one of the old terms that comes from the Greeks. Uh, it refers to dark, deep, low mood. Someone can have a depressive disorder and have that as an episode, um, a so-called episodic depressive disorder. Or they can have that in a, a recurring fashion where they repeatedly, even after episodes of recovery, succumb subsequently to a further depressed episode. Bipolar is a different thing again. In bipolar, there's a fluctuation of mood with varying degrees of the opposite of depression, so-called mania, where you have increased mental activity, increased uh, physical and mental um, uh, business uh, with uh, an elevation of mood uh, and an impairment of judgment um, so that you always get the flip side of depression. And that's why some people refer to uh, the disorder as bipolar mood disorder, uh, where that occurs. But that's a minority of mood disorders. 1% of the population will have bipolar mood disorder, um, whereas between 4 and 5% of the population will have a depressive disorder. The word manic, to do with manic depression, sounds appalling, where bipolar sounds softer. What I did at that time, which a lot of people do, is I drank very heavily. So that was a very difficult time for me, for my family. And, you know, it's something I'm not very proud of. Indecision rules every hour of your day. My attitude is get out of the house every day. Try to be normal. The word normal just simply means everyday things. A family support or friend support in someone who is recovering from depression, from a depressive episode, is so important, really, because uh, depression by its nature is an isolating, lonely illness. And um, so the more support a person can get in whatever form that comes in, the, the better they are. I was very lucky that I was the age I was when all of this happened to me, for the simple reason that I have patience and the waiting for to feel better, I could go along with that. That's where I feel so sorry for the youth. They don't have the patience. They want to be better today. And it does take time. I hear about stigma all the time. And I have had experience of it myself. Stigma comes from a term taken from the Greeks, where they marked out the slaves and captives they took and so it made them seem uh, demonstrably different from the rest of society. Any time we do that, and label and dismiss a group of people, we stigmatise them. The trouble with that is that we tend to exclude people uh, who, whom we see as having suffering we want to be distanced from. When we're talking about stigma, the word stigma actually means mark of disgrace. So when you relate that to mental health problems, um, what it means is that people are made to feel, um, I suppose, devalued um, or to be embarrassed because of their mental health problems, which is very hurtful to people um, and can be very damaging. Um, certainly what we do know is that um, people with mental health problems, um, and really it's one in four of us, so it touches all of us, um, is that the stigma can often be more challenging and more difficult to face and to deal with than actually the experience of being unwell and having a mental health problem. So that's, that's something that's very significant. It really is one of the most significant, um, I guess, obstacles that people face in their lives who do experience mental health problems. And really, I suppose, how um, that kind of manifests is that, um, and why it can be so damaging, is that the stigma of mental health problems can prevent people from perhaps coming forward and, and getting help. 
um, and sharing with somebody that they are feeling that way or not doing well. So that is incredibly important um, that it prevents people from getting help and oftentimes people suffer in silence and, and that's just not okay. Um, we as a society need to do something about that. I was appointed minister and I asked the Taoiseach uh, for the health portfolio because uh, of an interest in the whole general area of health. I wanted to get out there and try and destigmatize the whole area to ensure that people went for help at the right time rather than leaving it on the long finger. And to my mind, that was the way of dealing, a, a, an active way of dealing with the whole issue of suicide. You know, we talk about pain and sometimes emotional pain can be so much worse than physical pain. And I think for most people, and I can't speak for everybody, um, but for most people, they want to relieve that pain and the only way they can they see that they can relieve that pain is suicide. So we need to make people aware that they can talk, that they can reach out and talk, that talking does help. And to do that, I had to obviously speak about myself and of course, uh, I was quietly apprehensive uh, lest this could rebound, but at the same time, the driving force in my mind was to get this out there in the open, to get people talking about stuff, to get people to go for support, try to uh, get mental health to be looked upon in, in the same way that we could aspire, as it were, to ensure that the same as coronary illness or cancer uh, illness or whatever else that mental health should be treated the same way and there's no big deal about that. I know one person who, who I was speaking with recently and she said to me, you know, she's incredibly qualified, you know, has all the skill sets, but any time she goes to do a job interview, they see a gap in her CV and they ask, well, what happened during this time period? What were you doing? And if she's honest um, and she says, I was in a psychiatric hospital, the conversation, you know, very much stops pretty much instantly. So, um, you know, do pay people then, are they forced to, to lie? Do they say that they're traveling or whatever else? Um, and I suppose that that's not really, um, you know, it, it's a question that we need to ask um, all of ourselves as a community, as a society, um, you know, do we need to do that? And, and should people be, be forced to, I guess, to cover up that um, or feel embarrassed about having a mental health problem? Uh, I'm aware of a call I got from, from a person who explained to me that her husband um, had a mild mental health issue uh, he was referred to a private hospital in Dublin. He was in for three weeks. And shortly afterward in the canteen, this is a state company, or a state organisation, I should say, uh, where one of his superiors came down and said, uh, over the cup of coffee, look, so he give you a tip, he said, um, I wouldn't advise you to look for promotion within this organisation. I came across much of that the notion of people making a loan application and they certainly be stigmatised in the context that if they put down that like that, there's a problem with that and people are afraid to do that. And when you think of it this way, one in four people at some time in their lives will have some, some sort of mental health issue. So the greatest politicians, actors, uh, had some difficulty with mental health and moved on without any difficulty and held on. And I think the greatest thing is that there are so many examples of people uh, who may have had a mental health issue and moved on to hold down positions of great responsibility. And it needs that to lift it. Even so, we still have a long way to go to overcome the many misconceptions, fears and biases people have about mental health and the stigma these attitudes create. Effectively reducing stigma and discrimination requires concerted action by everyone. It's time to change our attitude. Society has to take responsibility for people with depression. Um, we as a society need to do something about that. It could be you, it could be me, 